Hey guys, welcome to LA Love Creative, and today we're talking about my new favorite software for photography, Dehancer for Lightroom and Photoshop. If you haven't, make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we post new videos. Cue the intro. Now, I recently have been getting really into film photography. I've been shooting Kodak, Fuji, different types of brands of film, and I'm loving it. And I think this is a great time to explore other options if you don't wanna spend the money on film, film development, film costs, film cameras, all of that can really start to add up in price. And with the software that I'm going to talk about today, I think you can get a cool film look if you tweak it and mess around with it that might help you from not having to buy film. Now, this video is not sponsored by Dehancer. They contacted me, asked me if I wanted to try out their software, give my opinion on it. I am, I do have an affiliate link in the description below if you want a discount on the software. But aside from that, all these opinions in this video are my own. And if you want to support the channel, then maybe download the software in the description below. If not, just check out what I have to say about it. Now, I recently just did a shoot. I was doing a clean fashion shoot for an agency I work with. I had two awesome models. I'll have their information below as well. And I just wanted a clean, different, you know, commercial fashion look. Now, and I thought this was a great time to show you how I would integrate Dehancer into my workflow. Now, all these images have been slightly retouched. I've messed with the skin. I've cleaned up the background a little bit, but in all honesty, I think they're all looking really good the way they are. Now it's a matter of doing some color work, getting a film look, and giving, a, giving the images a little bit more of a pop. So the first thing you're gonna do is after you install the, the program and get it onto your computer, really easy installation, you're gonna go to Dehancer in the filter menu, and then here, here's where all the magic happens. Now that we're in Dehancer, we have different types of looks right now. If you look, it actually applied a look straight up from the left presets over here. You can go through them right here, kind of go through them. They're all different types of film stock, film emulation. Some of them I ain't never even heard of. I'm gonna keep it real, 100%. But we have some really cool looks in here and a lot of cool options that I'll break down in a minute. I tend to go for either Fuji film looks or Kodak film looks. The reasoning behind that is if I'm shooting film, I usually grab Fuji film or I grab Kodak film and usually, you know, Ultra Max or Portra 400 or, you know, Fuji, all different types of Fuji film. So those are the looks I usually gravitate to. However, I saw a look in here that I was really just really into. Um, which was a film stock I've never shot with and is this Aerocolor um, 125 and I really like the way this looked. I really like the way that this had a contrasty, you can zoom in right here on here and kind of drag through the image. It had like a contrasty, almost poppy look to it that I really started to like and it also kind of desaturated some of the color from the image. You can go through the temperature sliders and kind of cool down the image, warm down the image. I personally would probably keep this a little bit more cool. You can um, add a tint to the image if you want to give it that more green, yellowy film look. I'll add a little bit of a tint just because I, want, I do want that kind of grungier look. So we're going to add a little bit of a tint into that. And I also noticed that when I'm adding the tint, it kind of messes with the shadows a little bit, which I like. Cool thing that Dehancer has is it has these different print profiles, which is kind of like emulating if you were getting these printed to kind of give you more of like the texture, different type of uh, dimension, dimension, uh, dimensionality. I don't even know if that's a word. I'm not sure. I think one of the things that Dehancer Photo kind of thrives at is the little imperfections of film. So one of the things is obviously film grain. I like the film grain that Dehancer applies to the image. I like how adjustable the film grain is. We can add more. It has almost like a different type of texture to it. You can change the resolution of it. I really like that. I like the fact that it has a little bit more functionality when it comes to the film grain. Another cool thing that I really like about the different features that Dehancer has is it has halation. Halation is kind of like the 
the what I was saying, the imperfections of film sometimes. It's, it's, it's those imperfections that make us gravitate to that look. It's giving it this color burn, kind of almost like you messed up the uh, development process when you were actually developing this film. On top of halation, we have bloom. We can have the highlights bloom a little bit, kind of like a black pro mess, kind of like that type of filtration, which is also very filmic, which most of the time I have a black pro mess on my camera. I had a black pro mess on my camera when I was shooting this image. And it's gonna give it more of a bloom in the highlights, especially if you have a light source. I'm gonna turn this down um, considerably because I already had, had diffusion on my lens and I don't feel like I need to have double diffusion. Um, so we're gonna turn that down. But I like the way this looks. Uh, if you zoom in, if we go like this, we go before, after, I think it gives it a really cool filmic look. It's subtle. It's subtle enough where I could definitely give this to a client and I don't think they're gonna be like, oh, this is overbearing. Now let's move on to a different look. Let's try this black image right here. So we're gonna mess with this image. And what we're gonna do for this one is we're actually going to change the whole vibe up. Ignore the background of this image. I'm probably going to stretch the black out and make it more cohesive. Here's Portra 400 right here. I think this is a very, you know, popular film stock. I think it's something that people will definitely want to see how it emulates. So now we're looking at it, Portrait 400. Let's look at the skin tones. Let's go off, on. I like what it's doing to the skin automatically. I like it. All I'm gonna do in here is, I probably would warm it up a little bit by just messing up the temperature. Tint, I would mess around with the tint, but I think it's looking pretty good. The only thing I might do, it's like I did before, is add a little green to it. Right here, you can see what I did to the image. We can go before, after, before, after. And I'm digging that. I think that looks pretty cool. So if we do the same look that I just did, this is Kodak Portra. You can see right here, it's doing it. It's doing all types of stuff. You can see right here, it is changing everything to kind of fit the Portra, but we're gonna actually change and do a whole different look, film stock. I really like this O O R W Chrome UTI. Don't even know what this one is. We're gonna try this one. We're gonna try to see if we can bring some of the blue out of the image. I like it a little blue, but I think it's a little bit too much. But trying to warm up the image, maybe make the tint a little bit more subtle. Whatever you're doing, always take, if you have it at 100, put it at 70. If you have it at 10, put it at f f 6. It's the idea that anything you do, you think it looks really cool, just bring it down. And that's what I would do for something like this. I would literally tone it down, take a layer, bring it down to like 50. So now I have a cool look that's not over taking the image. I would basically get all the film looks that I want using Dehancer and then I would 
tone them down using layers in Photoshop so it's not too overpowering. So that's what I would do the image like that. Another example of that would be going this image right here, going here, tone it down. So now we have a cool look, but it's not overbearing. So now we have another image here. We're gonna go in here, go into Dehancer, click it on. We're going to put the preset I just put on this image. Go to my presets. Let's put this preset on there. And I think it looks pretty cool. With this one, for some reason, it got a little too um, green. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna bring it down like about right there. And we're going to bring the exposure up and the black point up. Not bad. I might even go down here and mess with the blue because I feel like it got a little bit too much over there. That looks pretty cool. So now we have this really cool image. Really cool image, go in here, tone it down. And look, look how cool that is. We have this more cohesive vibe right here with this shot and this shot. If you want to see the before and after for this shot, you have it like that. And I think it looks really cool. So that's all I have to say about Dehancer. I think it has a lot of potential. There's a lot of functionality, a lot of different film stock emulation in there. You really have to go in there and just tweak it, try to get the looks that work best for you. I am more subtle with my film emulation. I like things to just add a little bit of uh, texture, a little bit of a stylized look. I don't like to go too over the top with it. And I think that's a good rule of thought when it comes to photography in general. If you want a discount, check the description below for a 10% discount using my affiliate link, LA Love Creative. It'll help out the channel and it would be really appreciated. That's all I have to say about film emulation today. See you later.